And I want to tell my regards to all the attendees and to all the interpreters. Next year, I am 100% sure I will be with you on site. So we can start. We are waiting for the presentation to be on the screen. But a couple of spoilers on what we are going to discuss. Thank you, Anya, for the presentation, for the introduction. It's a long-lasting project I have been in engaged in. The outcome is uh, the product, the text or the document we want you to be familiar with. We do not call it the standard due to many reasons. I remember one conversation with Andrei more than a year ago in Odessa. We talked that association is a cool thing. This is a consolidating instrument for the society. Somebody feels this necessity, and it is the uh, nowadays requirement. But we still need to specify the format. and. That is the personal issue of everybody on what he or she decides what the format is for him or for her. In search of the formula, we were considering various options, but uh, the variant of the institution association didn't seem to be realistic for us at this very stage of development. That is why our choice was the development of product uh, that everyone might be able to use. We have analyzed various practices and many materials based on the practical experience while creating the product. This is our team, which has been introduced to you. We have spent lots of hours in Zoom. Uh, this is uh, the photograph of Andrei, Sveta, and me. We were working for many hours together. In fact, what we are going to discuss. We have created uh, some things, have developed many things, and we want to talk about it. We will tell what it is not about and what it is about. And we want to tell you why we keep the project going and what in what way it might be useful for you as the interpreter, how to apply it, and hopefully there will be discussion. Before we start lecturing, telling a lot, we would like to figure out on who is listening to us, what the requirements as. So let us enter the code on Menticom or use the QR code, uh, the, uh, the code 8588. Andri is going to help us in the process. Andri, can you hear us? On top of each slide, there is a code, which is 25938588, or try to follow the QR code. I want, I want uh, you to see the screen. The question, are you on site or remote at UTIC, we want to know. So we see the 100% answers are those who are on site. Hopefully those who are remotely uh, joining us, they will be able to give the answers and take part in our survey. And this is great. And we have a couple of questions for us to understand your experience and for you to understand what, you, what we want to talk about. The customer, for example, tells prior to the day of translation that uh, the 
uh, order is cancelled. Will you be refunded? Will you get the pay? Has any has it been specified anywhere in the agreement? We see that uh, most likely that depends on the customer. If there is uh, agreement consent from the customer, there will be some refund. Most likely that is not like this. 37% write it in the agreement. Those 25 who would never get any refund, they do still have the way out. Next question. You uh, have an order to give the translation uh, from home online for six, eight hours. Is it relevant? for three interpreters to provide such kind of translation. 10% would uh, consider the customer could never go for it. And one more question from the same set of questions. Would uh, the document specifying the relevant practices for oral interpreting would it be useful for you? In negotiations, there are some people who would say no, and that is 1%. But majority of the respondents consider that the document is necessary. And this is what we are going to discuss. Next slide, please. We were long uh, discussing and considering what to start the presentation of our product from. From my linguistic experience, from my life, there is such an approach. When there is something new coming uh, for me to get uh, to familiarize with, sometimes uh, the time is not enough for me to familiarize with it. When I, but when I have the antonymous word, and uh, the source word, that things become more clear. It is very important uh, to um, be realistic about your expectations, whether uh, that is love, some personal matters, or professional activity. So my dear colleagues, I want you not to have unrealistic expectations. So I will start from the thing about our product, what it is not. It will not enable you to uh, increase your professional skills. There are no practical advice on how to enhance. Thank God there are a lot of courses, uh, trainings for you to enroll into and to enhance your professional level. So our product is for other purposes. It doesn't guarantee any results, which means that by using our product, you do not get any guarantee that your income or the number of customers will increase. It also doesn't provide any privilege to you. This is not our case. Our product, the results of our product, is not obligatory for use. <coughs> and finally, it doesn't deprive anyone from the necessity to negotiate even for long hours with the customer trying to provide uh, the appropriate work conditions for yourself and to the appropriate relevant pay. What I want to encourage you to is uh, to have a conscious approach to your profession and to your work. The main intrigue about what it is re what is the product about, what we are talking about. We were thinking for many days on what definition to give to whether it should be the brand may or some creation, the text, the guideline, that is uh, our creation. 
In fact, that is a set of preconditions for the high quality translation, which are concentrated in wise in one place. This is the source which would enable you to obtain the characteristic features, requirements for the proper and relevant understanding for the interpreter translator on what he or she should do at every de definite kind of translation, including the uh, preconditions for appropriate uh, translation interpretation, that is negotiations, for example. And to make things more clear, the document, the supporting part of the document doesn't give any uh, privilege. But I should better say uh, that is a guideline which, ena which enable me not to get drowned in my profession but make me feel more assured about what I'm doing. It is a definite space, a definite environment, helping me to build, to develop an appropriate uh, configuration for a specific customer. As I envisage it, it is a baseline for standards, but unlike the standards which are guaranteeing uh, the um, sticking to the rules, our requirements uh, presuppose uh, the good pay, the good trust, uh, both from the customer, from the colleagues. This is the future of my profession. Now I want to consider what this thing is really about. So we have uh, established this website, bestpractices.org.ua. It contains uh, the text with uh, the best practices, with uh, the preconditions uh, of uh, good quality of interpretation depending on your audience. Right now this website contains uh, the text itself, but also the big red button. Uh, in the bottom and uh, at the top for us to be able to get your comments, your feedback. Uh, these best practices are created based on uh, the efforts uh, you heard about at the last year's UTIC when, based on the results uh, of uh, the work uh, of Alexandra, Svetlana, uh, Lika Kuznetsova and Anna Kalamitseva, uh, the first attempt of the ethics code of the Ukrainian interpreters was uh, created. Also, we took the professional standards and the ethics code of uh, the AIC and based on them uh, created this document. It's not a standard, once again, it's not something to be enforced, but uh, this is some kind of guideline which can be uh, used as a basis for legal relations. And it's an attempt to uh, somehow uh, describe uh, the existing customs and it's not the final edition of this text it's a living thing and we plan to work together with you to make it convenient both for us and for our customers so uh, this red button can be very useful for you because you can add your opinion you can uh, describe the changes you would like to introduce. Can you please see the next slide? Next one, please. So, here is the content of this document. We have here a very brief uh, description of ethical principles, nothing too long here. Uh, 
I know that some people are very reluctant to ethics codes of any kind. Uh, here we have uh, the four basic principles, and we truly hope that no one would be against them, such as confidentiality, collegiality, no one would be against. And some parts of this document are more useful for uh, the customers. Sometimes all of us are in a situation when a simultaneous interpretation is ordered and we have to perform consecutive or vice versa and for those of you who want to uh, get engaged in customer education here we have uh, the main definitions and once again it's not a textbook of any kind here we only have something that can be of practical use in our work and there are different uh, options for uh, the selection of teams, how many interpreters are necessary for a particular kind of an event. Oh, I would not like to go into detail now, but uh, based on your feedback, based on your pressing this big red button, we could have a more in-depth discussion. And also, uh, there are uh, other items uh, about the accounting of working time, why do we charge per day and or not per minute. And quite soon we are in a situation when uh, there are some extra work and uh, uh, we are required to work an extra hour, even according to uh, the Ukrainian legislation, extra work. Uh, extra work is uh, charged uh, twice uh, as expensive as, uh, as the general work. So uh, we can discuss how much uh, time is charged for, for the extra time. So there are some requirements for uh, the technical conditions, uh, the equipment. Uh, these are uh, the basic uh, standards of ISO describing this. Of course, we can simply send the customer uh, the link, but I'm not sure they will be ready to spend uh, 60 uh, Swiss francs to buy the standard. So we only provided uh, the main ideas here to remind ourselves and uh, the customers about the things. And we have even prepared a brief checklists in the end. We are going to expand this document. Uh, there will be a template agreement for uh, a simultaneous a consecutive interpretation. It is already beneficial for us. Uh, that's why we are going to continue doing this. Yes, indeed. I fully agree with Andre here. We started doing this, I think, for ourselves. We are already using our uh, product. And here are some examples from our practice, some examples of the use of this uh, text. This is a popular song in Ukraine. and. It describes a situation when something is cancelled, and sometimes an order can be cancelled quite unexpectedly. So uh, I'll tell you a story that started uh, in uh, December 2020. Uh, I got uh, quite a good um, a customer, uh, usually uh, they ordered 40 minutes uh, simultaneous interpretation sessions. We heard that uh, the customer likes to save some money wherever possible. Uh, but anyway, they are paid uh, what, uh, what I uh, asked. Uh, sometimes uh, 
Oh, we did uh, such a short interpretation sessions solo, but we uh, were charging twice in this case. And one day I was supposed to do it solo. We were waiting for a ranking official from Ukraine to take part. Five minutes before the meeting, uh, a text message was uh, sent to uh, my customer. Uh, the customer was upset. They switched off uh, the Zoom session. Uh, they didn't inform me. And then I got a phone call from um, a lady from their office. And uh, they said, we sincerely re regret that this happened. And I said, well, I also regret, but what about the money? But uh, I, I, I couldn't utter these words because, of course, it's a pity and it's, it's not the customer's fault. And of course, it's such a nice lady. Uh, I told that, yeah, it, it, it's a pity. And I put down the receiver. But I asked myself, am I guilty of an, uh, anything here? And I wrote them an email asking my dear customer, well, first expressing my regret that this happened. Uh, but I agreed in this case to charge only 50%, only to charge for one person. And in a minute, I got a reply. And they said, thank you so much for your understanding. The next day I got my payment. Uh, there were no questions or whatsoever. And I asked myself, what if I started doing these things two years ago? Yeah. So we are not boasting here, but we are sharing the word about uh, the real cases from practice. And we believe that all of you have similar stories to tell. I have a similar story. Three months ago, I had a request from my uh, international um, uh, customer here, but it was arranged through a Ukrainian office. And uh, anyway, it was a remote uh, interpretation. Uh, it was a full day uh, since uh, 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Uh, I also provided consultation uh, based on uh, their preliminary program. And uh, this is what uh, was happening in, in my head. I had some very intense uh, simultaneous interpretation uh, sessions uh, previously, and I realized that uh, there are such hybrid events uh, that are so frequent uh, these days, and sometimes uh, they entail elongated uh, schedule. So uh, before that, I sometimes uh, worked from 10 till 3 or hmm, on other types of schedule. Uh, six hours together, but we realized that uh, the workload was too high, uh, the stress was too high, and mm, at that time we had an active discussion on the different preconditions for optimal quality. We are not discussing the ideal world. We are discussing what is optimal in a particular situation. And we read different sources. We uh, had active communication. We uh, created some ad hoc uh, uh, focus group discussions. So this uh, remote interpretation of the new era, it is in many ways unprecedented. It's not something that was uh, born decades ago. So I realized that for the quality and uh, for reliability of interpretation, it is best to have three interpreters on a team. I had some doubts, and I didn't practice anything like this before. So I intended to use uh, some standards, some document that I could use as a reference. And I already see distrust on many of your 
faces because it is normal to have doubts in such a situation. But if you believe that uh, the customer has doubts, oh, not always. In such situations, when we need to take such decisions, when we need to select the best words and the best arguments. Uh, well, it's what Sasha sometimes tells me that I'm using too much of the abstract language, but a customer is a particular person or company which has some particular needs, and we uh, have to help uh, the customer about uh, the type, the configuration of uh, oral interpretation uh, they need, because we are not transferring our knowledge. We are offering some solutions in a particular situation, and we uh, need to use some reference for our decisions, because uh, the service is flexible. It's not something that we have in a warehouse and we are ready to sell it to everyone. It's uh, so this is the flexibility of our service about which is required for optimizing the uh, productivity. And uh, I'm also interested in providing the high quality translation because translation is an expert service and we need to be rapid in response in finding solutions and have them available. If they are suggested in some recipe book, how many, how much time it will uh, enable us to save. If we realize that the interpreter team, uh, I mean the three interpreters in the booth or two, doesn't matter how, how many, the number, the two or three, but if you realize that the interpreter team is the combination of uh, interpreters uh, which enrich each other with their peculiar competences, then uh, there is a sense about it. It makes sense. I do not, I do not meet I mean, and I don't specify the time limits, whether 20 minutes of activity for one or 30 for another, uh, the cycles. That is all the lyrics. Important, of course, important technical details. But please imagine yourself, even going back to the previous slide, there are lots of items, lots of things. They are long lasting. You just try to switch off. But in case you need to respond to several requests a day, and in case you don't have enough time to uh, consider all the theories and take them into account. It's quite comfortable to have something like a manual which would enable you uh, to have uh, a very um, quick and rapid response uh, in uh, the format of assistance consultation. And I have noticed a tendency which increases uh, the uh, hours, uh, the minutes uh, of uh, the activity of the event. In this respect, uh, in this case, I think we should take into account the fact that three interpreters might enable uh, provision the uh, high quality services with an extended time for the interpretation. As uh, relates to uh, my order, everything was quite okay. There were no mishaps about it. Everybody was satisfied. And Andre also can provide you his example about this kind of uh, extraordinary situation. Specifically about the situation, uh, this uh, the thesis. Uh, these examples, the standards, when uh, they do not work by themselves on them on their own. Uh, if you just tell someone, guys, let's work, uh, let let there be three of us working together, it doesn't work. But you need to choose uh, the words, the proper words. You need to find the words which would persuade the customer. So I want to give an example of the situation when I had an order for the online uh, interpretation, online translation, eight hour nonstop. The organizers uh, supposed that all the participants would make coffee themselves home, but uh, the translators uh, would uh, provide uh, their services. Uh, actually, they combined two days uh, in one. 
And I was looking at uh, their plan. Um, I thought uh, at least three interpreters it would require. Uh, I saw it was not enough. It was not sufficient number of interpreters. I said that it doesn't meet the standards, no standards at all. I told that to the customer, but he said we would be out of our, uh, out of our budget. It wouldn't meet our the budget. At the time, the relevant standards, uh, they were just in the process of development. And what I did next, I was considering what was valuable for that very customer. It was an international medical conference. I responded to him in the written form, I am sorry, I apologize, but I cannot accept these conditions. Hopefully we will keep uh, working with you in case it doesn't violate, violate my health needs and the health needs of other interpreters. And this was uh, the thing which influenced. I had a response in a couple of minutes saying that, yes, you are absolutely right, health is very important. So it may totally depend on you how these practices will be used, but it could be a very good foundation, good ground for you to apply them. Menti again, let us try to uh, follow the link, the same code, 259385888. A couple more questions. What we want to hear from you? We understand that you haven't read the text. You can look it through a bit later. How is it? Um, how is? Is there a great possibility for you to use these practices? Most likely. Uh, I, first, I need to read, then I will tell. Next, I don't believe it will work. And the first answer: I am not interpreter. Up to 69% uh, gave the first answer. Next, which aspect of the translator interpreter work would find this document most relevant and useful? First, for informing the customers about the uh, necessary, uh, the relevant practices. Second, for resolving conflict situations, situations for selection of equipment, for calculating the workload and work conditions, and for the cooperation with the agencies. The leader is informing the customers about the relevant practices, and the second place that's resolving conflict situations. And I would like also to hear the feedback on what conflict situations you needed it for. You can give the anonymous answer in case you don't want to disclose some uh, secret uh, information. And one more question. How do you think? Do you think these preconditions of quality useful? And in case uh, you think so, which way do you, are you ready to engage uh, to the um, approbation of uh, these uh, preconditions? The possible options for the answer. I will use them, but I will not tell you about it. I will use them, I will apply them, and will um, give a response on the side. And the third option, I consider it to be inappropriate. Now we're referring back to the slides. But we do have six minutes left and, and a question from the online. In fact, there is a question due to the fact that interpreters are not the only participants of the uh, interpreting market. There are agencies, uh, managers, uh, 
market, uh, members of marketing. No, not everybody is a freelance interpreter. Not everybody considers it to be important and necessary. But I want the agency as the um, as the provider uh, of communication between you and the customer for you and the agency uh, for, for them to enable you to communicate to the necessary information to the customer same as you would do this what we need we need the framework for work due to the fact that do we that we do not have the standards and for us to support uh, the keeping of at least uh, for some keeping the standards. We have developed uh, the training for the managers of translation agencies uh, where we role play to them, putting them uh, in the position of interpreter and vice versa, making them feel what is important for them, what would be important for the interpreters. And we need to make friends with the agencies but not to be antagonists. Not to contradict. We have a couple of minutes left for the uh, question answer. Want to remind you that best practices or okay, that is our site. You can uh, follow the link. We we would be uh, really grateful for any feedback from you. You also see the red button. You can press it in order to share the story of your success or, com uh, or make any comments. But you should remember that there is not a perfect world. You would never be beneficial. You, al you always should remember that you create your own happiness or you are um, making bad things to yourselves. You are responsible for your own success. A question from Natalia Fedorenkova. Thank you. How many hours is a half day? And online that is three hours and six hours. If there are two of us, uh, 40 minutes. If that is three of us, uh, this is negotiable, but it is um, detailly described uh, described in detail on our site. You can follow the link and familiarize yourself with the information. One more question. Hi, everyone. Hi, Andri. Hi, girls. I would I want to appreciate your work. This is just amazing, cool. I was lucky to have seen uh, you in the process of work the previous year. My question would rather refer to Andre because I know about his uh, legal background and have I have a uh, suspicion that in case I follow the link and study the document, I, um, I'm going to like it 100% because I was part uh, of the discussion. Andre, how do you think would it be legitimate and how legitimate it would be from the position of uh, how the agreements are uh, developed? How legitimate would it be to include the phrase in case of uh, cancelling? Uh, the conflicts would be resolved uh, due to the rules um, pointed out on the site and include the link to your site. Would it be relevant? Would it be appropriate to, um, uh, to include the link to your site in the agreement? Yes, we can include that into the agreement, but it is necessary for the two um, uh, parties to the agreement to uh, agree on that. For it to be persuasive, you need uh, to tell, for example, that this uh, very agreement covers uh, the uh, 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 covers and uh, takes uh, into account uh, the uh, standards uh, described inside and uh, address and add the address uh, the link to the site.
And that is totally depend on you, which way you're going to explain the customer how important it is. The more, uh, the more we introduce uh, this uh, rule and these standards into practices, the more relevant will be it will be, and uh, uh, the more it will be followed by the customers. So the idea for the name uh, for the next uh, chain of trainer uh, trainings is to um, uh, to explain uh, that to the customers. The source of information, any source of information works as long as you believe in it, same as uh, as cryptocurrency. Uh, the oral translation uh, would presuppose the maximum volume of royalty. But uh, the, the legislation regulates it. Unfortunately, um, not everybody keeps it, not everybody sticks to these uh, rules. And as I understand, this is the reason why you are uh, working in the direction in your direction. Actually, we haven't heard about the uh, resolutions of the Cabinet of Ministers or any. We are not talking about the uh, figures, so we are talking about the approaches, uh, about what uh, the service includes, what elements it includes, and um, most likely this is not efficient to fix the prices. But in case there is a necessity, so the natural evolution of the market in case, um, in case we have this uh, um, matters in the future, we want the relevant practices uh, to be standard practices, to be something we can be based on. And this red button, this is our hope, and this is something uh, that new practices can be included and something uh, you can follow and uh, take into account as an argument. I was actually not uh, asking you about the figures, but I was asking about whether there are any regulations. Andrei, can you comment on the uh, regulations as relates uh, to the interpreting? I haven't heard about any regulations on the interpretation. Uh, but we're not talking about the enforcement, about the coercion, but we need to, uh, it's about uh, showing as an example, uh, to be example uh, as a guideline for everyone on how the things should work. So at least uh, uh, the essential law on the Ukrainian language, which was uh, enacted on the 16th of July. Uh, the first step uh, uh, about Semitelis interpreting was made. Unfortunately, time flies very quickly, so I want to thank to our presenters. Please don't forget about the rest. Thank you.